about how I became an engineer. Um, I was a musician. I started doing music, playing guitar and piano uh, when I was 10, something like that. Um, piano first, then I didn't like it. And someone gave me a guitar. It was a Squire, Fender looking Squire uh, that I didn't know how to play, actually. And um, I started just playing the songs that I liked. I was into metal and rock. Uh, yeah, at that age, nine, ten years old. And um, I started playing by ear, you know, the riffs that everybody played. Um, but since I couldn't really do power chords, because I, I didn't know how to, uh, the first thing that I did without knowing what that was, was down to my guitar. Uh, I was in drop D, I think. And uh, so I could power chord just like this, just with one finger, like you would play bass. In fact, later on I started playing bass and I liked it more. But uh, yeah, that was, that was, uh, that was my first uh, introduction to music. I was playing guitars, I was playing riffs, and immediately I noticed that I didn't have a good left hand for solos and shit, but uh, I was a decent rhythmic guitarist. And from then I, uh, I started playing more and more. Music was just, you know, again, a very important part of my life. Um, I, I, I felt emotions when I was listening to music and I wanted to learn how to play the songs that I liked. And then someday, long story short, I, um, I was in a band that got signed and um, my first contract, my first production team, uh, funny because the, the producer didn't have a great work ethic, let's put it this way. Um, he just didn't want to work at all. He put me in front of the computer, in front of the recorder and told me, you know, let me see what you can do by yourself. Uh, and then I'll take it from there. The truth was he just wasn't interested in working at all. <laughs> His career didn't end well. But in doing that, when I was sat at the computer, I started basically teaching myself how to use DAWs. Uh, it was Nuendo at the time. And um, I started recording my ideas in the studio. I had specific sounds in mind, uh, specifically regarding guitar sounds and bass sounds. I was after beefy sound. And as you guys, I'm sure know, it's not easy to capture all that low end in a good way, left alone to translate it into a powerful mix. And so all the engineers that were working with me were failing at grasping the kind of sound that I wanted. So there was no choice. Um, I told them, hey, you know what, let me try. You know, just step up, leave me the chair. I'm gonna try, take, take a break. And that's how I started. I started doing sounds for myself without having any training really in, in sound engineering, uh, just going by ear. And I loved it. I loved it so much that I stopped being a musician for many reasons, mostly because the music industry at the time was a mess. Well, mostly because the music industry is a mess. But um, long story short, I realized that I liked the studio life better than the uh, musician life for many reasons. I didn't like to be on the road. Uh, for starters, uh, when I was done playing at the end of the night, I just I just wanted to go to my hotel and sleep. The environment around you is that. 
is the, the backstage environment. I felt out of place. And so you, when, when that happens, you can't expect the world to change. You know, it's you that is out of place. So that was one of the reasons, mostly because I really, really liked the, the studio work, you know, tweaking and making sounds and, and, and you know, making other people's music sound better. Uh, I really enjoy it and, and I enjoy it today too. It's like, I love my job very much. And uh, yeah, so my, my life uh, switched to that, switched to, to from, from being a musician to be an engineer. And uh, when I started mixing for other people, other people liked the results. And so I, at that point, I realized that I needed to study and to prepare myself uh, for real. And so that's all I did <laughs> for years. Just what I did every day, day in and day out. I was studying and practicing, studying and practicing. That's all I did for years. And from there, you know, more and more requests came in. I got my room my first room and from there it was just working hard every day that's that's how it happened uh, there's no secret then there's no there's no there's not one moment one specific moment in which i can tell oh that day i became an engineer it was a process and for all you guys that want to pursue this career this is my personal point of view my advice uh, it doesn't happen overnight unless you work in hip hop <laughs> but but that's that's a bad joke um, yeah I, I will not comment on that but it doesn't happen overnight okay it's it's a process it's uh, it's it's one step at a time it's getting better and then and then there's a bit of luck for sure but uh, my advice is never ever stop trying to improve yourself as a human being, as a mixing engineer, as a whatever the fuck you want or are or want to do, never ever settle for mediocrity, never settle for just enough to get the job done. That's not personally that's not how I do it that's not how I feel it should be done uh, always deliver a little more or if you can't deliver a little more deliver it a little faster you know um, and try to improve yourself that's that's the most important thing I think that's a, that's really a, a mindset that if m more people had in life we would be in a better world and another thing that i feel is important to to mention because we are talking about improving ourselves and, and and working hard at the same time um try not to set impossible standards impossible goals which is what i've been doing for a long time um Try to set realistic goals for the longest time. I'm a Virgo, so I'm detail oriented and I have insane standards, okay, in, inhuman standards. And I've been trying to fight against that because it's counterproductive. If you set a goal that is unreachable, if you know it's impossible, or if it's not impossible, is very unlikely you're not going to enjoy the journey you're not going to reach the goal probably and you're gonna be most likely disappointed and unhappy i found my balance in setting um in having a, a clear direction of where you want to go even with a mix when you listen to the song you have to know where you want to go with it life is the same thing you have to have a general idea of what you would look like at the end of your path but uh in doing that in trying to reach that final goal 
if you set uh, short-term goals. I find that is better because you keep progressing, you keep track of your progress, which is important because it's easy to fool yourself if you don't have a way to track objectively your progress. And so short-term goals, uh, let's say smaller goals, are very useful because first of all, it's every time is a new challenge, then you most likely, you know, can achieve those goals. And in this way, you are creating a pattern of success. Set short term goals, set goals that you know, even if you have to work hard, you can actually achieve they, they that they are possible for you to achieve. And don't set like, I want to be the best mix engineer in the world by the end of the month. <laughs> Come on, you know, again, unless, unless you work in hip hop, it ain't going to happen. Okay. But, you know, uh, go for instead, I don't know, this mix, I want to try to get no revisions, like first try and the client approve it. And, um, that's just an example, but yeah, that's, that's the point. Um, st set realistic goals and, and succeed and that will create a pattern. And, um, yeah, so I don't know. I'm probably already talking for way too long that I should, but this is just the beginning guys. If you enjoy these vlogs and asking me questions about everything, anything, why not? I have to take breaks while mixing so I can reply to you. I enjoy doing it and I like the interaction with you guys. I don't have many friends, so you are my friends. And yeah, so we can keep doing this. And about the many things happening in my life, and I'll tell you more about that later on, uh, I still have to reply uh, other questions that you already left in, in the first vlog and I will do that but just not to make the videos too long I will you know split the questions and the answers so uh, I guess this is it for this video I will also update you on new mixes right now I'm mixing a soundtrack and it's very interesting for me because mixing soundtracks it's so so much different than mixing songs but we'll talk about that another time okay so for now, thank you for watching. Let me know if you enjoy these vlogs. Like I said, I had to take breaks so I can do these and uh, leave your comments down below. Leave your questions, share, subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.